Thank you, Philip, for the very kind introduction. Um, a warm welcome also from my side. My name is Katarina Gera, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Immutable Insight and also the fund manager of Blockchain Fund. Um, you all probably expect me to talk about the Blockchain Fund today, and the agenda you know, says a new era, a new Blockchain Fund. And while we are now on Blockchain Fund number two, and in that regard, a new era has begun, that isn't even the era I want to talk to you about today. Today, I would like to talk about one particular, let's say, myth that the blockchain has been confronted with, and also we, as a fund manager, get frequently asked. Today, we would like to talk, first and all, about how blockchain and Bitcoin may or may not be compatible. There is a big discussion that Bitcoin seems to suggest that it is not compatible with ESG criteria. Now, we all know that climate change is one of the biggest and most urgent and pressing topics of our generation. And the EU action plan is very clear on what it expects as the regulators, but also as the political will and also the clients needs banks, asset managers to do. And that is to change the balance sheet, to change the assets, and to change it towards an ESG-compliant style of investing. And then the question is, well, if Bitcoin isn't compatible with ESG, can blockchain be a technology or digital assets an asset that in that regard you can invest in? Now, today, if there's one and one key message that I would like to do is let's have a closer look. Is it really so? that Bitcoin, just because it needs a lot of energy, isn't compatible with ESG? Is that even the right question to ask? Or do we need to dig more deeply and take a thorough look and do the math right? If you compare Bitcoin to the gold, or if you compare Bitcoin to the banking system, you may want to ask how dirty, or how energy efficient is it really? Or isn't there something that we can say, actually, if you think about it, if you look at gold, for instance, the question on how gold is being mined, how, energy, how much energy is being used, who is doing the mining, how much energy you need to save and store gold safely and to transport it in its physicality from one place to the other. Probably overall numbers speak a real truth. Gold mining is in fact more energy efficient and more energy intense than Bitcoin. And Bitcoin in that comparison is more energy efficient than gold mining. And I don't even want to get started on the overall banking system. One, because it's as, um, analytics that is much harder to do because you would need to sum up everything that it's being summed up with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, you sum up the production, i.e. the mining, the transportation, i.e. You know, all the transactions, and the storage of all these transactions and its history. And there you take the sum. I think we all recognize that that to do in the traditional banking system with multiple redundant servers across all the financial institutions is something that most likely would be a higher number, but for sure is harder to assess and is less transparent. Now, the one key message that I brought for you today and that I would like to elaborate on in my keynote here is blockchain technology is the one systemic lever if we want true ESG. If you want to, in fact, do something about climate change, reduce our CO2 emissions and prove and measure and manage how we do that, then Blockchain technology is really the one technological lever that we have to achieve that goal. And when we think about investing in that space, we can actually say that the blockchain technology will enable a zero to emission-free network, mode of transportation, and mode of investing, in fact. So when you look at the different consens uh, consensus mechanisms, and if you acknowledge the fact that Bitcoin is one blockchain, it's probably the most prominent blockchain. It certainly is the oldest blockchain, but it isn't the only blockchain out there. And while Ethereum has decided to move to proof of stake, 
as a consensus mechanism. There are other more younger and proof of stake native blockchains such as Cosmos or Solana. And then you can compare the proof of stake to the proof of work energy demand. And you will find that with proof of stake, you only need roughly, and maybe even a little bit less than 1% of what Bitcoin needs. Now let's just wrap that up and just remember, we said gold mining is more energy intense than Bitcoin. The banking system and asset managers most likely are too. But if we then compare the technological advantages between the proof of work and the proof of stake mechanism, we all can recognize and should acknowledge, in fact, that with proof of stake, the zero two emission free blockchain is a today's reality that we need to embrace, that we need to push for, and that we need to use more often in order to reduce our CO2 emissions. And that is something where when you look at it from an environmental perspective, no other system has that opportunity. It needs more energy, but it also isn't as transparent. And if we want to be credible, and if we want to actively manage and actively pursue a zero two emission world of investing and finance, then this is the way to go. Well, there isn't only the E in ESG, you may argue, and there are other myths about the blockchain technology out there. Now you have the S as in social. And there, I would like to reaffirm a point that I've made back in March 2019, when I was an expert witness to the finance committee of the um, German Bundestag, the parliament. Back then, I already argued that money laundering on the blockchain is literally the dumbest version of money laundering you can do. Now, of course, any type of money laundering is just as bad, and I don't want to say the one is better than the other. But, in fact, while you look at the global estimates of money laundering in the traditional banking system, you come up with something like two to five trillion US dollar each year. And let's not forget why money is being laundered in the first place. It's anything from terrorist financing, drug trafficking, and child abuse, and other you know, delightful things in that matter. Now, if we think that we want to stop those illicit activities, and if we want to take that seriously, then blockchain-based payments is a much more effective tool and method to not only detect money laundering, but with real-time analytics that, for example, we provide as a company, but of course also our competitors out there. With real-time analytics on the blockchain, um, with blockchain-based payments, you can effectively detect money laundering while it's happening and therefore you know, destroy the fundamentals of the business model money laundering itself. So when you look at that, again here, blockchain as a technology is a big technological step upwards and provides plenty of opportunity for you know, taking the box on S and making the financial system safer and sounder. Now let's come to the G. Now, I've spoken many times on all the initiatives that I think a state should do to talk about blockchain technology applications in its administration, in its functioning in general, in its servicing to its citizens. And I've also frequently said that I think that there shouldn't be any taxation without tokenization. But that's not the point I want to do today. The point I want to make is that Whenever we look for accountability, whenever we look for leaders to be transparent, and whenever we don't want to trust an intermediary, if we want to verify our own, if we want to be part of the system that accepts and checks and don't you know, just want to refer to some auditor, some lawyer or who else, you know, put a stamp on it, then the blockchain technology with its decentralization as the key focuses on exactly that. It gives each of us a right to participate. It gives each of us the opportunity to transact, to be part of the system without needing to outsource that to a third party and pay that third party for that fee. 
So not only will transactions become more transparent, they will be also becoming more um, affordable, also become more secure. Um, and there's one um, radio show in Germany called Deutschlandfunk, and they have given a nice example that I frequently quote. If you compare centralized systems to decentralized systems, then the security is in a scale from, you know, a little corn of sand at the beach to the world, the earth in its whole. So in order to really ensure privacy in GDPR, we can acknowledge that blockchain technology, again, is a technological step upward and also ticks a big tick in the box of G. So let me just recap for you. We've discussed why the Bitcoin energy consumption as a discussion falls short of acknowledging that not only you know, is it better than the status quo, but it also has a future towards becoming CO2 emission free if it you know, starts to run only on servers that don't, um, that don't need coal or any other energy source that emits CO2 emissions. We looked at the social thing and we acknowledged that with blockchain-based payments, money laundering could be a thing of the past. And on the G, whenever we think about governmental responsibility, governance in also a private institution, we can be more transparent, accountable, more secure, and easier to be verified. And so overall, I want to reinforce my key message for today for you. Blockchain technology is the one systemic lever that we have if you want to tackle climate change and if you really want to use our assets to shape and provide a better future. Now, you may ask, well, why is she talking about that and what's she got to do with it? Well, I would like to introduce two new topics today, two new products where we want to embrace the blockchain technology beyond Bitcoin investing, want to provide a product for a wider public audience than just professional investors, and also, and most importantly, combine all the benefits of ESG that I've just elaborated earlier and combine them into a product. So today, I'm very, very excited to announce our joint venture with Staking Facilities. Those are three um, experienced staking providers, also from the town where we're located in Munich. And we together provide a new product that's called Sustain Liquid. It means you can access all the benefits of staking, manage your CO2 emissions, which are going to be none, and provide a tool where if you have access liquidity and you're not interested in the negative interest rates of your bank, you can park the money there, you can get a small return, and still you know, provide a CO2 emission form of saving your money, but also keeping your money. So if you want to know more, um, check out sustainliquid.com. You can register. We've um, prepared a little a game over the next weeks until the actual launch of the product, but you'll find more information piece by piece over time on sustainliquid.com. The next and second product that we're going to announce today is Crypto Best. And Mark here it's a little bit of a playfulness with the German spelling of crypto. So we spell crypto with a K, not a C. So CryptoBest.com will be the second product where um, despite us in the Blockchain Fund 2 serving professional investors, we will be serving a wider audience. And you can buy the product on a German stock exchange and you can have it your money at a German bank. So you don't need to care about wallet, about learning about all the different tokens, but in fact, it's your one-stop shop. It will crude anything from Bitcoin to Ether to our specialty token investments. With our real-time analysis from Immutable Insight, we will provide you the um, access to the fastest growing and most used tokens out there. If you want to learn, if you want to learn more and also want to reg register yourselves, check out cryptobest.com. And over the next weeks, you will find more elaborate information on blockchain, on what we exactly do, what the product has in its benefits, but also its risks, because we do acknowledge our responsibility to bring education, risk awareness, and a deep and thorough understanding of what people are investing in and what that money does. In that being said, I would like to close today's keynote. I'm 
Wishing you all a great Crypto Assets Conference ahead. Thank you again for Philip and his team to pulling this off and providing an institutionalized forum where the blockchain community can gather and exchange ideas. And hopefully next time we'll see each other in person again. Thank you very much.